Welcome to the third video, repairing and rebuilding a Grasshopper beam engine. The engine is now back together and running on compressed air on the bench. It has a new piston with a silicon o-ring, far better than the old one which had cast iron piston rings that were a rattle fit in the bore. So the compressed air or steam now moves the piston instead of blowing past. The main problem with this engine is that it is brutal. The cylinder bore is one and a half inches in diameter and the rest of the engine is far too small to cope with this power. When the engine was in its original state, blowing past the pistons with hardly any power at all, requiring about 50 to 60 psi to function, it was fairly quiet, well apart from the sound of all the air passing the piston. But now nothing passes the piston, and the piston moves from top to bottom in the cylinder very efficiently. In this video when you see the engine running slowly, it's only running on about 10 psi, which is pretty good really, before it wouldn't even start below 50 or 60. One or two things I'm not really happy with with the overall design of the engine, which I've just mentioned, and the fact that the engine is on a soundboard, which is the base, a hollow box, so even the tiniest mechanical noises are amplified by the sound box. One solution that I did consider was to sleeve the cylinder down to one inch, if you look at the Stuart beam engine, that's about right, a one inch cylinder and a flywheel of this diameter. But on this engine, that piston is incredibly powerful. And it's really not an engine you want to get your fingers anywhere near. Even at low pressure, the power available at the flywheel is considerable. The other problem with this engine is the valve. It's far too big, it's a slide valve, and as you turn the pressure up, the amount of effort required by the eccentric to move the valve via the linkages is far too much. If the flywheel was twice this size and a lot heavier, then it would be better, because the flywheel would move the engine over top dead centre far more easily. Normally I would use early admission for a steam engine, but you can't on this. When I set the valve time into early admission, there just is not enough kinetic energy on the flywheel to push it over the admission point. So the engine is currently set for late admission after top dead centre, which is never a good idea because there's nothing to cushion the piston at the end of each stroke. That's why you can hear some more mechanical noise than I would like. The valve's better though. I machined the valve so that the travel is much improved. And I also made an ornamental valve nut for the top of the spindle. Originally the valve was not right at all. Both of the nuts had to be slack to allow it to move up and down without fouling. But I machined a small amount off the valve carrier and now it travels up and down the valve chest as it's supposed to. This is only the second run on compressed air with this engine and it will get better with a bit of time. Everything is adjusted to close tolerances and slightly tight in places. So once it's been running again it will be fine. When working on these old type steam engines, made many years ago, sometimes by people with a lot of skill, sometimes not, you have to have a very sympathetic approach to the renovation, otherwise you may as well just buy the castings and make a new one. This is about as far as I'd like to go with this engine and it runs very well. I hope you found these three short videos useful. Thanks for watching.